Um, so I'm Charlie Stockton Powdrell. I'm a senior project manager at the University of Manchester working in the digital health software team. And um, in my spare time, I am one of the co-chairs of the Research Project Managers Network. Uh, Suzanne. Um, so I'm Suzanne Carter um, and I'm a project manager at the University of Manchester in Cancer Sciences um, and I'm also one of the co-chairs of the Research Project Managers Network. Great, thanks Suzanne. Um, next slide please. Um, so just a brief outline of the talk today. So we'll talk you through um, who the RPMN are, a little bit about what we do, um, the vast amount of expertise we have within the network and then a little bit about how we can support research. Um, so um, our remit briefly is that um, we meet twice a year um, where we have um, a number of invited speakers and then we provide some bespoke training for our members um, as part of that process. Um, and Suzanne will tell you a little bit more about the remit within the next few slides, um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit now about who the RPMN is. So the network was established in 2013 by Cara Avsal, who some of you at Health Innovation Manchester may know, um, and Alison Littlewood. Um, both of them were at the time programme managers working on um, National Institute for Health Research programme grants. And they found that they were uh, meeting and discussing various issues with related to managing projects and programmes of work. And they wondered whether there might be other people interested in doing the same thing. So they set up the um, Research Programme Managers Network as it was known at the time. And there were probably about 15 or 20 of us at the first meeting back in 2013. Move forward to April 2021, and we have over 200 members now, which is fantastic. So about half of our members are from the University of Manchester, and about half of them are from local NHS hospitals. And as Alessandro said, we um, support and um, are a peer support network for people who are working in health and social care research. Um, so we do meet twice a year and actually our next meeting is tomorrow and we offer bespoke training to our members because we recognise that the role is relatively unique um, and whilst there are some excellent general project management courses out there it's also useful to have things that are quite bespoke to research project management for our members. And we're very grateful to be supported by the Faculty of Biology, Medicine and Health, um, and they provide some funding for us to support meetings, um, to support um, training, etc. cetera. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Suzanne. So um, the um, oversight group or the co-chairs um, are made up of myself and Suzanne, who represent the University of Manchester. And we've recently been joined by Rachel Volland, who works for Aqua and uh, that is part of Salford Royal. Um, and we're also looking for new members to join us so that we have representation of our members from the university and from the NHS. So I'm gonna hand over to Suzanne now, who's going to tell you a little bit more about what we do. So what does the Research Project Managers Network do? So the purpose is to encourage, facilitate and support effective research management. And we aim to provide a network of support for programme and project managers, share good practice, discuss and evaluate new working procedures, constructively discuss, discuss challenges within research management, establish a shared development framework to encourage and support professional development, and provide training and development opportunities for all of our members. So what expertise do we have? So project managers can be brought into uh, Grant at any stage of a project, depending on the need and the funding. So we have a wide range of knowledge, skills and experience across the breadth um, of the research life cycle in health and social care. So this could be anything from grant applications through study setup, study management, budgeting and financial management to close out and archiving and much more in between. And because we're research specific, we have experience of communicating with a wide range of stakeholders, and that includes funders who've got a variety of differing needs. We deal with commercial and non-commercial uh, research, and also uh, we've got members who deal with all different types of studies. So that could include CTIMS, phase one, randomized controlled trials, or just basic science studies. So how do we support research? So Charlie's already described some of the things that we do. Um, but basically, rather than providing a consultancy service, what we are is a peer support group of project and program managers. So we have access to a large number of um, experienced and well-researched project managers. Um, 
and can help research in the following ways. So we host biannual network meetings and ad hoc training sessions for project managers, and that's aimed at increasing knowledge and development. And project managers can sign up to the network and you'll receive notifications about events and training um, events that we put on and have access to an experienced group of research project managers who will be accessible via email. We also connect people. So after every meeting, we have um, a dedicated networking lunch so that PMs can meet each other and have further discussions also with the speakers. We highlight services, so relevant research services. Um, they're invited to speak or you can put yourself forward to speak at one of our meetings and we'll highlight and promote the service that you provide um, so that the research managers um, can promote this in their wider teams and use these across wider projects. We also encourage the sharing of best practice by holding uh, question and answer sessions after our meeting presentations. Um, and this is to gain, um, this is why it's a way of gaining more specialized, as specialized advice, distribute ideas and knowledge. And we also send emails across the network at any time. So that could include um, surveys for data gathering, uh, questions and advice about research project management. Um, we can also help if you're advertising for roles in research project management. So if you're looking for a research project manager, we can send a link of, to the application across our network and that should reach a more targeted audience, and hopefully generate more interest. And then finally, um, the research project management uh, manager network have created their own development framework. And this is to help project managers assess where they are in the career and where they may want to go. And Charlie is going to talk a little bit more about this now. Thanks, Suzanne. So the development framework um, took uh, probably two or three years to put together. And we realized that although there are some existing frameworks out there that can be utilized, they weren't quite specific enough or unique enough for our needs. So a group of us got together and um, looked at what the skills, knowledge and experience are that are required to be um, a competent and proficient uh, research project manager. So you can see here we've got four areas of, fo of uh, focus. So we've got project management, research governance, communications and leadership and management. Um, and the framework is intended to help program and project managers identify areas for development within their career path. So the set of core categories or topic areas have different levels within each one that help provide a structured means for program managers or project managers to reflect on their knowledge, skills and experience, and also to identify areas for further development. The framework can be used as a basis for identifying training needs in personal development reviews um, and the framework was designed to encompass the variability within the role of a research program and project manager. We acknowledge that not all of the sections are going to be applicable or relevant for everybody in each of their roles. So the framework is, uh, is uh, meant to be used flexibly to reflect the current role um, and hopefully that's the way it's being used by, by a number of our members. So next slide, please, Suzanne. So you can see here, we've just tried to identify some of the different stages that help plan development. So we've got um, some of the skills that we might expect to see at a foundation level when somebody is fairly new to a project management role. And then as people progress, we expect them to um, move towards the intermediate and the advanced levels. And these are fairly arbitrary terms that we've taken, but we've tried to look at um, different ways in which we can help people plan for their development and their progression. Next slide, please. So we've pulled together the development framework skills matrix, and this is um, a fairly quick way of people being able to see where they currently are and which of those skills they might wish to develop further. And as I say, this can be a really useful tool to help in um, uh, performance and development reviews particularly when your line manager is somebody who's not routinely involved in your day-to-day -day work, as is often the case with our roles. So quite often you may find that a project manager is managed on a day-to-day -day basis or works very closely with a principal investigator who could be an academic or a clinician or a clinical academic in some cases, but actually they may have an administrative line manager who isn't as close to their day-to-day -day work. So this is a great way of being able to see very quickly and very clearly where somebody's current skills are and the areas that they'd like to develop. 
So I'm going to hand you back to Suzanne now to tell you a little bit more about some of the bespoke training that we've offered to our members that will help with their development. So this slide just lists some of the training that's been delivered by the RPMN. Um, so these are training that could be delivered through the university or through the NHS, or sometimes we bring in experts from outside the organisation where we don't have the, um, the courses in-house to do this. So this is just a couple of examples, managing people and managing change, influencing and negotiating, uh, project management, etc. So as Charlie mentioned, um, this, we don't necessarily have a course, uh, certain courses that you have to go through to be project managers. So this is just sort of filling a gap of some of those uh, training courses that we don't already have. And um, we try to provide a range of trainings to aid the development of project managers, increase the efficiency of research teams, and hopefully take the burden off some of the PIs and encourage a sense of uh, investment across the workforce. So just in summary, the RPMN is a peer support and development network. We're half university and half NHS. And we work towards recognising success and value in research and aim to build capability through bespoke training and the development framework. So we feel that we've now set up a blueprint which can be replicated for the development and peer support networks. And we're opening ourselves up for future collaborations with groups in the wider Northwest and beyond. Um, and unless Charlie, you have, you have anything else to say um, about that, we can open up to questions. No, that's great. Thanks very much, Suzanne.